Hi guys, welcome to Lunatic Astrology. And today we're talking to Kate Wind and Julie White about the intersection of astrology, feng shui, and the intimate home. I hope you're gonna learn something today from both these amazing women about how you can actually create prosperity and thrival in your home using the wisdom of these tools. So Kate Wind is also known as the Kate Wind on Instagram is a feng shui expert, multi-generational. Her mom is a master feng shui, um, which is you know the art of creating um, flowing movement of energy through your home and she's also a brilliant astrologer and then Julie White is a, a well-known interior designer Julie White Interiors who moved into the soulful aspect of creating helping people create sanctuary and uh, homes that are a reflection of their true soul and not doing it for them but helping them do the deep investigation of their own soul to then create the reflection of that in their home so her brand is the intimate home and she's also can be found at Julie White Interiors and all that information will be in the description box below so you can go find out more about each of these amazing women so welcome both of you and um, I'd love to each of you take a little time to say a bit about your work, and then we're going to dive into uh, practical tech techniques and tips for people. So, hey, Kate, why don't you start, and then Julie, you can take the baton from her. Perfect. Well, that was just a beautiful introduction, so I don't have too much to add to that. But yes, feng shui is one of the things that I'm known for, and I think one of the most interesting things about feng shui is, you know, when I tell people that's what I do, I get two reactions. One, either they want to know everything, right? Tell me everything, or kind of the hands go up and because when we see the hands go up there's just an assumption that feng shui is only oh you have to have a red door or oh your bed has to face a certain direction and while those things are absolutely true um i think that's why julie and i are going to provide you so much information i like to take it more from the side that the home is just the, the biggest vision board that you will ever create when we start looking at the home like that gosh that can make you just look at your space in a totally different way so I love reconnecting people with the home and helping them put their visions literally on their wall. Oh, I love the vision board idea that, you know, cause I'm a vision boarder. So yeah. I'm always thinking them up on my, you know, like collages, but to think of my home's art, I'm in my home and you can see this big, beautiful piece of art behind me and it's called the chief. And it was painted by a girlfriend of mine and uh, it's quite valuable actually. And uh, I, I think it is part of my vision board cause I, it's in, my feng shui corner for wealth, I know for, for reputation, but I really wanted to like be the chief of something like to be like, you know, I, I kind of like, oh, that fits. Okay. That's cool. I digress. Um, <laughs> that's a perfect just, example though. That's a perfect example. And the fact that it's behind you, it's supporting you. It's a big sturdy animal. You know, we're not doing something that kind of floats off or something that dissipates or disappears when we're, especially when we're talking about your reputation, right? We want something strong there. Yes, so it's been there. I only, only had it there for a year, two and a half, two years since I moved to this apartment where it sits in this kind of spot. And it has been my two most successful years as an astrologer in my life. So I, I do believe this feng shui stuff works. Yes. Um, so anyway, just a, yeah, a little example. And Julie, tell us a bit about how the Intimate Home came to you and a little bit about your background as a designer. Yeah, well, first, I love the idea of the home as a vision board. It's just amazing to hear another person say that. It's why I connect with, with Kate and why I connect with you. Um, the Intimate Home. So I've been an interior designer for over 20 years. And I've worked in the luxury market. And what I've realized is that people feel most alive when they're surrounded by a home that reflects the essence of who they are. And, and unfortunately, that's just not always the case. Um, people are filling their homes with things that are beautiful aesthetically, but they aren't necessarily supporting and nourishing who we are, who and what we truly are, our soul. Um, so I built the intimate home to, so basically creating an intimate home is creating a home that tells the story of your soul in every single detail. And by doing that, it leaves you more immersed in a life of truth, beauty, and magic. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. Truth, beauty, and magic. Yay. <laughs> Absolutely. You brought up something really interesting. I just like to piggyback about the idea that people can create these beautiful homes. I walk into these beautiful homes and it's just people get stuck into what's trendy. So even Absolutely. like on a lower octave, right? Like cactus got really big, like decorating <laughs> with cactus. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Cactus, they have a defense mechanisms, right? They have little pointers all over them and they're survivors, right? They can go a long time with um, the, the water and stuff. So 
just because it's trendy doesn't mean you need to have it in your house. And I think you might deal more with that being on the interior designer. <laughs> like, why are people putting these things in their house? And I'm coming back and <laughs> saying, just because it's trendy doesn't mean you have to have it in your house. You absolutely need to connect with it on a much deeper level. Yes, it's essential. It's absolutely essential. And I, I love that you see that because so often, you know, people don't, people don't see that. And once people begin to make that shift in their perspective, and once they start to surround themselves and be swept up by the beauty that is really the infinity that's within us, um, everything changes. It trans it's incredibly transformative what happens when all of a sudden you start to surround yourself with the things that reflect the truth of your soul. It, it, and it ripples out into your life. So it's, it's magical. Mm, I like to piggyback on that as an astrologer and comment on my discovery of something about myself that I didn't honor for so long that has been transformative. You can see some tulips back there, right? So on my, on my dining room table. And, um, you know, I have uh, uh, in my fourth house of the real estate of the, of the chart is 12 pie slices and my fourth is the home of the chart or for everybody, it's the home of the chart. It represents where you live, it's your ancestral roots, you know, it's family of origin, but it's literally like the home. And, you know, I've got Venus there in Taurus, right? It's a Taurian, nice. earthly, grounded, sensual pleasure kind of vibe. And I always felt I didn't deserve flowers because they were, they perished, right? At, versus plants that were evergreen, I could water them. And I thought that was like frivolous or, you know, a waste of money. And then some, at some point in my 40s, I realized that I need to have flowers, cut flowers in my home. And it really soothes me and it makes me feel really happy. And so it's literally in the chart, I should be doing Venusian things, which are beauty and flowers and, you know, sensuality for the Taurus element. And she's in dignity in there. That's her sign, right? She's at home in her sign. And that is just one example. I, I, all winter long, I have flowers in my house, no matter what. <laughs> I love that. Not to get up too off topic, but even if we look at astrocartography, you know, a lot of people use astrocartography just for travel. And that's where we're taking your chart and we're laying, laying it over the world with the longitude and latitude of the planets. Um, I like to look at that for people and find out where there's some great spots and then incorporate indigenous items from those areas into their home. Yes. So let's say they have, you know, a strong line. I know going through Georgia, <laughs> just a silly example, right? But might get a, some great imagery of peaches in the home, right? Again, how do we incorporate the indigenous uh, flowers, plants, fruits, buildings, architecture into the home? Because you're bringing that synergy into the space. That's fascinating. My okay. Venus line goes through, um, it goes through where I used to, where I used to live, Vancouver, Canada, okay. and um, of course, you know Venus is you know important in my chart. She's angular um, in the fourth house, and uh, I had for a long time, not now, when I lived there though, I began to want to decorate my home with indigenous art from the coastal uh, native peoples, and I had paintings and sculptures by them. And it was, it, but it was, I was in that environment. But I love the idea of sort of looking at the chart and a la carte picking. Yes. You know, where your lines go on Neptune and India. I've often had a lot of Indian art in my house. I have Durga here right now. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I love it. That's awesome. I love it. The, the connection and synergy with astrology and feng shui, it's amazing as I'm listening to both of you, because of course my mind is popping with a million ideas. It's like, oh, this is such an integral part of of this, of creating an intimate home, how amazing to have this extra information to mm -hmm. guide us and then fill our homes with these things that light us up and, and make us feel more grounded and more in our essence. It's absolutely awesome. So let's turn our conversation then to the, the wealth profile of a home in terms of there's in feng shui there's a area of your house it's called well it's a bagua map it has like a tic-tac-toe board you know you stretch it out to the shape of your home like a rectangle for instance but you know nine little crisscross grids and the one of the pieces of the grid represents your prosperity corner and I will ask you know Kate to give us some advice on that and, and, and it's funny in astrology I've also thought of what if you lay the Bagua map over someone's natal chart, and like because in India you can take the natal chart and make it into a square or a rectangle instead of a circle. That's fascinating. I have to 
think, ask her how she does, if she does do that. But I also want to give everyone practical tips for if you know your chart. So we're going to talk about my version, I guess, a little bit. And Kate, Susan, astrologer, just practical tips based on maybe the element of your fourth house or the element of your moon. We're going to talk about the Bagua map version of prosperity. And I want also for Julie to go really deeply into some of the protocols that might be, be um, discovered in her intimate home course that align with this idea of making the home a place of thrival, you know, not survival. We think of our home like hunker down, get in your igloo, you know, get your teepee. There was a time where we were all like in survival with home, but now I think home, given where we've come as a collective culture, uh, other than a deep freeze, poor Texas, we're recording when Texas is in deep freeze, for the most part, we are in a time where our homes are no longer a, a hut for survival. It becomes a place of, of thrival. And so that's where I like Julie to bring some of her wisdom in there as well. So um, I'm gonna pass the baton to you guys. Yeah, well, I think with that said, I think 2020 really did highlight the home because people were spending a lot more time in them. The house did kind of go back to that survival mode because we didn't have many other places to go. So I think it did highlight it. But when we talk about um, prosperity and financial in feng shui, I want everyone to stand at the door of their property. So if you own a house, you can stand at your front door. If you're just renting a room, I want you to stand at the door of your room. And I want you to look into the space. And I want you to look at the farthest, most back left-hand corner. And that's going to be your financial area. So it might be a, a room, right? It might be a closet. It might be a bathroom. There's all different sorts of things. You might be missing that back left-hand corner if your house is kind of shaped maybe in an L. That's going to be your financial corner. I want you to take a really good look about what's happening there. And I would think as you start describing that area, you might be able to use that same terminology and lay it over what's going on in your finances right now. Okay. So that could be an area. Oh, I love that room. It's very, you know, I sit in there. I love the space. I have pictures of blooming flowers. I, maybe I have some movement showing with ships moving through. Okay. That could be great. Maybe you could be thinking, Oh, that room's really cluttered. It's a guest room. I just close the door. I never go in there. And I might say, okay, when was the last time you took a good look at your finances? When was the last time you looked at that checkbook statement? They should mirror each other because when we go off of the idea that the home is a reflection of space, your home is telling a story and what story is it telling? And you're in control of it. And I know that might sound silly. Oh, I make changes in the home and that's going to change my pocketbook, but that's, that's what I'm saying. And I stick behind that, <laughs> stick behind that. So back left corner, and we'll talk about more details as we go through, but back left corner, what is going on? Quite a good question. If you live in an apartment building, do you use the door of your unit or the building itself? I would use the door of your unit. Okay. I thought so. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, just to make this come alive a bit, you know, I have the back corner in my house when I walk in my unit, uh, the, the, the top left corner is where the kitchen you know, coffee maker, toaster, you know, and all of that is my recipe books, um, my hot pot, my, my coffee maker. So it's like a place where I'm concocting and, you know, cooking and recipeing up stuff. I often chop stuff over there, but it was interesting. I did bring this up to Kate in a conversation recently. You know, only, I was here for at least a year before I realized my garbage can was there. <laughs> yeah, but it's an active room. Yeah, I like, right. like, oh, what am I throwing? What financial stuff am I throwing away? You know, so then I moved to another corner, another place in the unit so that I wouldn't have garbage in my or, you know, disposal in my money corner. Really, that's a common sense says no. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's also the other thing about feng shui is like, I'll have people say, oh, I've had a feng shui consultation before. Mm -hmm. And that's simply like saying you've had a haircut before. It is an ongoing process. So the fact that you used your kitchen, you're active in it, you're in a position where you have a lot of creativity to create in your work. That's all great. But let's say, okay, I want to level up. What can I do next? You can always make improvements to that area. So when you move that trash can, I'd be curious, like what showed up within that week? that improve the finances. And then when you're ready to level up again, right? Maybe we get rid of like an old toaster that kind of acts up a little bit and get an upgraded one, maybe get red appliances, add some color back there. You can continue to make upgrades to improve or level up those areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you for all oh, I love it. I'm, I'm just thinking about my back left corner, which is a light filled corner in a, like a, a great room and I have plants in that corner and my plants are 
enormous and growing like I don't know what to do with them um I I love it it's my favorite corner of the house oddly so I'm you know let's wait for for that like abundance <laughs> to catch up with my my growth <laughs> of the plants because what a, an interesting year it's been with a pandemic and being a designer and not being able to be out in the field at people's homes um really really interesting yeah so, so to your point, plants are a great thing for the financial corner. So the element, if we want to get right into the elements from the feng shui standpoint, it's wood. So any sort of plants, any sort of heavy wood. And when we think about finances, I want you to think of royalty or expensive things. Okay. So we can think of the colors for that area would be red, dark purples, royal blues, royal greens, anything like that. But that wouldn't be a place to put your little fern that oh, it's iffy if it's going to make it the next couple of weeks, right? Or that orchid that the beautiful flower is falling off and we think it's going to come back. Those, I've never gotten one to come back. I don't know, like prove me wrong, but we want things that are thriving in that energy. So you're absolutely on um, the right track of having those there. You know, if they're thriving even too much where you're saying, oh, it needs to catch up. We can even just move some of those out there. It could feel a little overwhelming. We can always shake it up and just see what happens. You know, because I'll go into homes, I'm sure you can relate to where someone spends a lot of money on a piece of artwork. And I'm thinking, oh, no, take that down. What is that saying? Right. Um, they'll have pictures of shipwrecks where they're being yeah. <laughs> overtaken by the water. And they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And they're nice artists. But I'm thinking, do you feel like you're drowning? Do you feel overwhelmed? And they're saying, yes, yes, yes. But if that was expensive. And I say, OK, it's not going to cost anything to take it down put it away for a little bit and see what happens. See, see what shows up. And then if you have to put it back up, go ahead. But usually they don't, <laughs> usually they don't. That's a great example. Like, yeah, don't put a shipwreck in your financial. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, you got me thinking. I think I remember when I moved the garbage can, it was the beginning of the, the this year, like to, behind us. I always forget we're in 21. <laughs> I know. Beginning of 2020 and I had my most successful financial year as an astrologer my entire life. So um, that garbage can was also me where I, I think I, you know, metaphorically was disposing of money without thinking as well. I was more perseverant in my uh, managing of the money I have. And also just, I, I had a lot of thrival, but I'm, I'm going to back and re-inspect my corner now to see what else I can change. Um, how about you, Julie, in terms of intimate home and creating thrival energy and how does that extend from one's soul? Mm, oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I think it's a default of creating a home first living with what you love and clearing space, which is probably the most important thing, right? But the intimate home begins with the feeling first. So it's about deciding what is the feeling that I want for this room. And if let's say it's your financial corner, there's still a feeling attached to that. It's abundance, it's thriving, it's wealth, it's expansion, whatever it might be, right? We tap into that feeling first and then we create around the feeling. So we check in with ourselves and we say, okay, well, if, if the feeling is of abundance and expansion, then what in this room serves that feeling and what doesn't serve that feeling? So we look around, we, we love it or we let it go. And that's really the key is letting go of the things that don't serve us, that don't reflect our essence or that feeling that we're looking for. And once we let go, just like taking down that shipwreck picture, we notice for what changes and what shifts inside of us. And then what shifts as a result in our lives and our relationships, and then how it ripples out into the world. You make such a great point with that because it's not cookie cutter. We can't put the same piece of artwork. I think that's what's so unique about what we do is some people just want to say, okay, tell me where to put a red envelope or tell me where to put this, you know, this Chinese statue so I can have this. And because abundance or prosperity doesn't look the same to everyone. Some people are focusing more on they need money. Um, and some people are like, I have all the money. <laughs> I have all the money in the world, but I have no like personal relationships. And that's where I am lacking the abundance in my life. And that's where we can really play and get creative with the different artwork, with the different decor on top of the layers and I'm sorry, on top of the elements and the colors in the space as well. It's really a true reflection of what we want and who we want to be or who we really are. 
And that's yeah. the thing. If it, we have to look at um, our home as the sacred mirror and anything that does not reflect the sacred in us is something to start to reconsider. In your course that you teach the intimate home, can you give us an example of maybe one of your students who had like a, a, a like one of those reveal moments like I do with my garbage can, you know, because they were looking for a feeling and that, you know, just changed everything. I mean, I'd like to get a, to the texture of this kind of course that you teach. Mm, so I can tell you about a, a really interesting story about a client that I worked with. So um, I was working on a really big project. So it was a new build. It was a really large um, home, a uh, family of four. And my client, who was the wife, um, really amazing woman, super doer, go-getter, type A, extremely successful, didn't take much time for herself. Um, when we were building the home, there was a room that she wanted to design just for her. And it was going to be sort of her sacred space, the place where she wanted to connect uh, with friends or, or read a book or just like take some time in the middle of the day and, and whatever. So while we were building, um, we were actually at the old house and she had a hummingbird feeder. And she, we were talking and she sort of like paused in the middle of our conversation got completely distracted by this beautiful hummingbird. And I saw something in her face and her body language that was completely different than anything I had seen in her before. And I said, Sue, what just happened there? And she said, oh, it, you know, it's the hummingbirds. I love my hummingbirds. And I said, well, what do you love about the hummingbirds? And she said, they're so free. Um, they just remind me of like the nectar of life. And in that moment, I knew what we needed to do in that room for her. And so that room became the hummingbird room. And it was built to bring the outdoor in, the outdoors in. And we did a beautiful sort of conservatory on the roof. So it, it ended up being in glass. It was not constructed on the plans architecturally initially like that, we changed it. And what we did is I created a space for her that had four seats that were situated around a central table and everything in the room was white and natural and really was designed to reflect the outside. But the artwork that we chose was all hummingbird. So it happened to be an Alexander McQueen tapestry of these gorgeous, vibrant hummingbirds, the throw pillows, and everything in this room was designed around that feeling. And it's designed for her to sit and reflect by herself, to look outside, the hummingbirds were surrounding her. And this is a room I will tell you that she uses every single day. Not one of those rooms that you design because it's beautiful and then it sits and you never, you never step foot in it, which I see so often in my career. Um, so that's really like the nature of the course. It's doing that in every single space and every single space will be different. Every room will have a different feeling, but there will always be a single thread that weaves its way through the home that is always a reflection of who you are. And that way you, you are literally held in that space as you wake up all the way until you lay your head on the pillow to go to sleep. So, you, you know, know, as an astrologer, I, I, my mind goes right to astrology. I'm sure Kate does too, because she's an astrologer, but I'm like, oh, well that sounds like, you know, an air moon or an air element in her fourth house. You know what I mean? I mean, there's this call for freedom and spaciousness and lightness, and it has that vibe of air. Um, so, you know, that's what I think is really cool in this whole conversation at a deeper level is that there are codes in the natal chart that incline us towards temperaments that can be very, very positive, like my flowers and Venus or uh, my earth, like I like a lot of wood, my wood table, everything's wood, ancient wood, art, I have uh, antique wood, I have modern wood, but I have wood. Because why? It's, a, it's I have a, a, an earth sign fourth house, you know, I'm craving the wood. And yet I have a fiery uh, Aries hot 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 peppery moon <laughs> and look at the color of my chair guys can you see the chair wait like let me show you the chair yeah, oh, oh yeah red oh, yeah red. it's my fire that needs a red <laughs> throne to sit on 
I love it. So, well, you bring up such a good point too, because I'll be in homes again, when we talk about the feng shui, I'll go into homes, they're immaculate, they're perfect, everything matches. I could be in a hotel on the Las Vegas Strip, right? But I'll look around and I'll say, I know nothing about you by looking at your home. I can't say one thing that I know about you and I am in your space. I am in your bedroom. I am in your bedroom and I can't say one thing that I know about you based on your space. And it's so disheartening because you know, there's so much money there. <laughs> there was so much money to orchestrate how they put the house together. And feng shui could be as simple as that, that the home reflects who you are and what you want. It's not just pretty colors and pretty furniture and expensive stuff. Yes, you are um, preaching to the choir, right. <laughs> speaking my language. I just recently was in a home um, with a, a new client who has a wonderful eye. You know, not everybody has an eye, which mm -hmm. is why I have a job. Um, <laughs> but this woman did, she had a phenomenal eye and she was doing an addition and I was looking through her home and she had this gorgeous room. Everything was put together. It was immaculate. It was beautiful. And she had all of these books on the shelves and it was styled like an interior designer had been there. And I, I asked her, had she had a designer before? And she said, no, I did this all myself. I said, wow, you have a phenomenal eye. So I'm looking around and I'm, and I'm looking at the books and I said, oh, I love this. I read this book. And she said, oh, I just bought those for the color. So an entire room was filled with the most beautiful books and the most beautiful things. And it was entirely soulless. Um, none of it was anything she had ever read. It was all styled based on photographs from Pinterest and Howes to look beautiful, but there was no essence. There was just nothing. Um, we've since done a, a major addition on this house and, and changed her way of thinking about her home. And it's really, you can see it in the way she walks. You can hear it in the way she talks and the way that everybody feels. It's a completely different experience. It's a completely different experience. Well, cause you have to think that sounds like you're putting up a front. Yes. A little bit. And so it's like, how are you put? how are you doing that in your life? And maybe not even intentionally, right. um, but then change in the home, I would think you could become more genuine. People could actually see you for your worth mm -hmm. or what you have to bring to the table. So, and that, that's a great example. I was just going to say, yeah, it's the facade, right? The home yes. is the facade, the <laughs> face, but it's not the real soul or the, what's underneath. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> And this is what we see. So, you know, there are wonderful designers out there, designers I'm inspired by. Um, and yet there's so, it's been almost entirely left out of the design world, the soul piece. It we has. talk about collecting, we talk about, you know, things being personal and, but we don't see it. We don't see it at all. And I could even use my, my um, I was thinking about your space, Lori, and the fire that you're sitting on. And we look and, and I'm thinking, Kate's looking at my office for the first yeah. time. <laughs> and my office, which is really interesting, it's very crisp and clean and, and minimal, right? That is not what the rest of my house feels like, which is organic and light and airy and warm. My office is designed like this because this is my place of productivity. This is my place where I have all of the clients and all of the inspiration surrounding me. And so the white is very intentional and the you know, uh, inspiration board behind me and in front of me and, and all of this is super intentional for me so that it holds me in a place where I can get the most done. I can focus on my client's vision and not my own. Right. Um, and, and it's really important that, that like, there's certainly personal things in here, not that you see on camera, but I have my children over here and I have my wall of my inspiration, desert and Buddha and, uh, opening flower. Um, but yeah, like I wouldn't even be able to work efficiently if my space wasn't designed this way. It really holds me in my, my personal pursuit of creativity mm, yeah offices, 
Oh, sorry. Oh, I, was say, I was thinking of like the whiteboard. You know, like your, your office is like a whiteboard. The whole thing is like a whiteboard. Yes. But you are Aquarius fourth house. So in, your temperament is an air, is an air in the home, right? You said airy more than once for things you've been saying. So, you know, your office has a, a, an airy feel to me. It's like, yes. yeah. Oh, it and, definitely has an airy feel too. And I am like, you know, like you, totally Venusian. So there, that is everywhere in every space in my home, whether it's my office or my bedroom or whatever, there is that like deep steeping in beautiful things and beauty that I need because I feel the most grounded and the most home in that way. Mm. Well, and your moon's in Taurus exalted and you've yeah. got a, you know, that Taurian quality and you know venusian quality as well venus is up in the top of the chart on the mid heaven how perfect for a design oh, right? perfect absolutely <laughs> leo on the mc engaged within three degrees <laughs> venus yeah. so, well if we're going to talk about finances and abundance late we have to bring the office in as well regardless of where the office is in the home um, I think home offices are much more popular obviously than they used to be mm -hmm. and so obviously th this isn't your problem but you know, people that have cluttered offices, people oh. that they set up the office and then they don't want to go in there because they're not attracted to the space. Oh, I have an uncomfortable chair. I have, you know, they have a million reasons why they're not using their at-home office, but that can also tell a lot about your prosperity. And when we get into the office, we talk a lot about the power position. I'm going to give actually a great example, which is going to contradict what I say, but this is why I say you can't just, it's not just a one thing fits all. We talk about the office, I want you to be in the power position. So think of the president's office, you know, the United States president, you can put whatever president you want in there, but it is front and center. And the president is looking at who's coming in. And so often in home offices, I see, you know, especially as women, we're pushing our offices against in the corner. And we look like a secretary, we look like the help. You know, I say, take, take the power, sit in a position that you see who's coming through that door. It puts you right? It makes you feel powerful sitting at your desk. Like, yeah, I'm a CEO. I'm an owner. I'm a founder, whatever. Um, but something that's going to contradict that whole story is, so you had mentioned I'm a second generation astrologer. And so my mom is still actively working, but my mom is very set in her ways, right? She's been doing it for 30 plus years. <laughs> she still has the same recorder that she uses. She's still right. And I'm trying to like, okay, let's, <laughs> let's see if we can update this. And it was in, um, mid 2020 that she decided to take herself out of the power position in her office and she moved her desk the opposite way um and she just said universe show me what i need to see and it was interesting because right around that same time without me knowing that she did that i started doing lives on facebook because i thought okay how can i still stay relevant uh during covid because all of my gigs up and down the strip had canceled on my in-person gigs so i started doing facebook lives and I was only seeing my mom and my partner. So my mom would come over and we'd go on camera together. Then we started the podcast and we started doing mom and me astrology appointments together. And it's like, oh my gosh, you opened me up to all these new things because I took myself out of the power position. She's like, even a year earlier, I don't think I would have been open to doing those things or even entertaining them. Wow. What a great story. Holy right? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So do you re recommend for people in their offices to walk in and take the far left corner of their office when they walk in to represent a place to create like plants and, 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 and royal colors as well? Yes. Yeah. So you can take that same concept about the back left corner of the home. You can apply that then to every single room that could be overkill, but it is something to consider <laughs> when we're just looking then at the office, especially somewhere that can be its own little home on its own, right? Sometimes we put like a little living area in the office and we have a little refrigerator. We've kind of create a whole new atmosphere in that area. Mm. But absolutely the office you want to be surrounding yourself with stable, sturdy things, not. Are there three big no's for the finance corner that you see people make mistakes on all the time besides garbage cans? <laughs> okay, yeah, I was gonna say garbage cans, fire, like the fire element, having um, uh, a lot of fire, like fireplaces, sometimes we can't obviously help that. We can put some other cures in place, but straggly plants, I kind of mentioned that earlier, cactuses, plants that don't look like they're thriving. I mean, I've seen some wild things, but you know, <laughs> like um, 
How about yes. candles, Kate? Are candles, since it's a fire element, is that something that's like a no-no in the financial corner? I wouldn't do an overabundance of them. Mm. Yeah, I would keep it very like minimal in that area. Is that because fire is consuming? Fire kill, fire kills wood. So because wood is the element, we don't want, we want to stay really away from metal because metal kills wood and obviously fire burns it. <laughs> Yeah. It's such a fascinating conversation. And also like just to speak to the clutter in somebody's office, it's the same thing throughout the house. Yeah. Even, you know, not necessarily the, the prosperity corner, but what I always say to clients when I see a cluttered home is this is a, a reflection, like what's going on on the inside. Um, this is people, there are people, and you know this, Kate, that will tell you they're comfortable inside of the chaos. I don't believe it. I don't, I don't buy either. it. <laughs> nobody's comfortable inside of the chaos and once they they clear the space then I have yet to hear a single person not deep out breath <laughs> never, up a never great point. Happened, right yeah and because I think with the feng shui thing sometimes people are just looking for a quick fix like mm -hmm. tell me where to put this tell me where to put that what can I put here and until the clutter is addressed whatever I tell you to do will not be nearly as powerful with the clutter, however I said it, but the clutter needs to leave first for it to be the most effective. And again, I know people don't want to do that because they just want a quick fix. Like, just tell me what to do. <laughs> Can I move my bed a certain direction? Everything will be fine. But the clutter, and we talk about, you know, I love the idea of thinking that the universe or God, whoever, you know, you subscribe to is our ultimate waiter. So think about sitting at a restaurant and you have a full glass of water in front of you um, and the waiter is not coming over and you're thinking like, I could really use like a cocktail right now. Like, why aren't they coming over? But you're sitting there with a full glass. Okay. So let's say we start empty emptying the water. Now we're emptying the home. <laughs> okay. We're donating things. Now the waiter shows up. Oh, can I get you some more water? Actually, I'm not interested in more water. I'd like whatever tequila. <laughs> Hey, the house is the same way when we're sitting in these full houses, full bedrooms, packed closets, like how would the universe know that we need anything more? Mm. Because it looks like we're totally satisfied. So even the simple act of, I'm going to clean out my pen drawer today and I'm going to make sure everyone writes. Okay. And well, the ones that I don't, I'm throwing away. So I throw away five pens. Like when you're doing that, I say, tell the universe I'm, I'm ready for more. And it's, Oh my gosh, I have story after story, like within 24 hours of things showing up because the universe is saying, oh, they're ready for more. They can take on more. I love it. There's a book that was written years ago called God on a Harley. And the woman decides to empty her closet out at, well, she's divorced. She's alone. She's single. I don't know. She wants a man. I think I can't, yeah, she's single. And uh, she read some book about the universe, the universe of horrors of vacuum. And she said, okay. So she cleared her entire wardrobe out. She gave it to goodwill. She only left herself like three t-shirts and three pairs of jeans. Like wow. in the main, I was real minimalist. Okay. So the punchline is, of course, she knew that she created a space for something new to come in. And what came in was a man or Harley, a Harley. <laughs> and she needed her t-shirts and jeans, but she didn't need her gowns and she didn't need her you know, high heel shoes. <laughs> yeah. Cute story. Um, I, I think that when we simplify, you know, you say declutter and people get anxious, but simplify. When mm -hmm. we simplify our lives as well, I mean, it just gives us more spaciousness and interiorly. I mean, my daughter is a student. She's just discovering she might be an interior designer. She's got Venus in the 10th and on the midheaven, just like Julie. And uh, she just went through this really cool experience of becoming mentally, emotionally, and fit, uh, well inside of herself by becoming this. Um, designer of her student rental and uh, and it was just a transformation in her being as she designed her own space and found out she likes doing it she's really good at it but it's also that thing she had to get rid of a lot of stuff she had to declutter simplify and it's been a quite a journey of watching her do this in the last three months really cool incredible That's all great so here's what I'd like us to end up with. I thought we think we'd go about half an hour. I think we're just about there. Um, I'd like to, uh, for each of you, Kate and then Julie, because that's the order I see you guys in, to tell us what your most recent project is, what you're up to, and uh, in detail as well, because I know Julie's launching the Intimate Home in about a week, and I'll put a link to her course below, but maybe give us a little bit of an idea for you, Julie, what the Intimate Home course involves for the participant and Kate what's where do people find you most e easily and what do you want them to know about what you're up to like these days 
Absolutely. So um, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at the underscore Kate Wind. Um, I try to post several times a week just to keep people current about some astrology things and then just some tips and tricks um, of what to do in the home feng shui wise. And then I also run a podcast with my mom. So we collaborate together once a week to bring many little series, 25, 30 minutes that are easy to digest. So you're, you know, if you're new to it, you're not like overwhelmed with a bunch of language. Um, and you can find us on your favorite podcast app, um, mom and me astrology. And then just because COVID hit and, you know, a lot of people are spending more times in their homes. I wasn't doing on-site consults. I was doing a lot of Zoom consults, especially in 2020. Um, I do have an e-workbook that walks you through um, your space. It prompts you with questions about what are you looking for finances? What are you looking for relationships? Who are your helpful people? To get you to start brainstorming about what ideas or concepts, artwork can you put in the home? It lays out the Bhagwan and we touch on the main four corners with the colors, the elements, what to avoid, the do's and don'ts. Um, and it's easy workbook, you can download it. And it's meant for you to really jumpstart that journey before you have someone come in and really take a look at your space. Cause I understand that that can absolutely I'll be overwhelming. I'll put the link to the downloadable Perfect. in the description box. Thank that you. sounds like a great way for people to get a taste of what you're up to. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm gonna get it myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Me too>. awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. And so, yeah. So I'm have... launching next week on February 26th. Yep, February, February 26th. It's my second um, doorway to the Intimate Home Course and it, it begins on Friday, February 26th. It'll be the live Zoom. So it'll be four live Zoom classrooms for 75 minutes. My husband, Devin, joins me um, and you literally are inside of our intimate home and it's an amazing thing to do with a partner. And we walk you through the process of how to create an intimate home. And um, there's also studio hours. So every Monday, I have an hour live Zoom for studio hours and there are replays available. So you can really do it at your own pace. The lives are wonderful to be a part of because we've really like, we're building community, we're supporting, we're bouncing ideas off of one another. And it's nice to hear everybody's sort of questions coming up because um, you kind of have like designer on tap for those four weeks. Um, and, it, and that's it. So it launches and it's uh, theintimatehome.com. And then my other business is Julie White Interiors where I do residential design and I am doing Zoom consults. But one of the things I'm adding to the intimate home is um, an opportunity, and I haven't sort of figured it out yet, so this will be new as we work through it, but a way to consult with me for the person who wants to do it on their own. So not somebody who wants to hire an interior designer, but somebody who wants their very important questions answered uh, while they're designing or renovating, because so there's so many balls in the air and so many critical decisions. Like maybe it's, I'm choosing between these three different countertops. What do you think is gonna work? We'll do a video walkthrough of your home, much like Kate, and sort of decide, um, help you make critical decisions or just answer design questions that, you know, people don't have the answers to the, the real design principles, the things that make the difference when you're designing spaces. So that's something that will be on offer and I'll add that to my website soon. Oh, I like that idea a lot. It's kind of like, it's, you don't, you're not committing to someone taking over because you want to be involved, but you need that mentorship or guidance along the way. Right. And also for the people who really, you know, you can't afford an interior designer or you don't want somebody coming into the house because we're in a pandemic mm -hmm. um, and you really just need some questions answered or you just need a little bit of guidance. That's what I'm there for. And, and that's awesome. You. Yeah. It's fantastic. I love it. Okay, well, and I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> Lunatic astrology. <laughs> you can find me guys everywhere. Just Google me. Um, so thank you both for being here. I'm so excited by the synergy between using uh, the intimate home, the soul of the home concept with feng shui and astrology and Kate being both a feng shui and astrology expert. I'm loving that you guys have this, I think what is a very synergistic uh, co-brand energy. So one of the reasons we're doing this for my listeners is I want those two to get together a matchmaking <laughs> all right I love it. so 
I have so enjoyed the time with both of you today. Thank you for participating. I'm going to stop the recording so I can say properly goodbye to you. But for my listeners, don't forget to like and subscribe and share and comment. I'm growing the channel. Please feel free, of course, to get in touch with me anytime if you have questions for either of our participants as well. All their information and contact stuff is in the description box below. Alrighty, uh, and I will pause the recording to say goodbye to you guys properly.